the brain is the most advanced derivative of the all biological evolutions in the human beings and in the all animal world. So, brain it is a complicated product of biological evolution and it is the most mysterious part of human body. But the anterior most part or the uppermost part of the brain known as cerebrum. The cerebrum the cerebrum is derivative of prosencephalon and it is forming part of forebrain with the diencephalon uh, which includes the thalamus, the hypothalamus, epithalamus, subthalamus and metathalamus. So, this part of brain the cerebrum forming the most mysterious part of the brain and it is having multiple uh, uh, parts which are having some uh, lobes which are having the elevations, the depressions, the convolutions. The area of cerebrum or simply the outer surface of the cerebrum is not, uh, uh, this is having some elevations and some depressions. It is not smooth surface like the cerebrum of some lower animals which are not having the elevations and depressions. The cerebrum is covered by a thin layer of the collection of cell bodies known as the cortex. So, cerebrum is having outer covering of the grey matter. So, this is the coronal section. When we see this coronal section from the part of the brain, we can see the outer layer or the cortex uh, which is made up of the neuronal cell bodies or somas or also known as perikaryon. So, it is having a layer of cell bodies or soma or perikaryon this outermost covering having a thickness of 1 to 4 millimeter. This outermost covering which is having a thickness of 1 to 4 millimeter is known as cerebral cortex. So, this is known as the cerebral cortex. When the collection of cells is inside the CNS, it is known as nuclei or the cortices, but when it is outside the CNS, it is known as the ganglion. 
ganglion is a collection of cell bodies, these cell bodies or neuronal cell bodies uh, which are uh, working as a single entity and having same types of neurons are known as ganglion and having a outer covering or the capsule of the ganglion. But in case of CNS, we can see the outer covering of neuronal cell bodies uh, this is also known as the gray matter this is also known as the gray matter these neurons are forming multiple layer these are forming multiple layer and to increase the number of neurons in this cerebral cortex we can see the elevations depressions elevation depression some are shallow and some are deep or simply we can see it is a beautiful garden big garden which is having mountains and which is also having the valleys so this is the cerebral cortex. What is the reason behind these convolutions or uneven surface of this cerebral cortex? As we all know, it is intelligent. It has to, it is having memory and it has to make some intelligent decisions. So, it has to collect information it has to integrate information, it has to interpret the in fact formation and it has to make decisions, the intelligent decisions. This cerebral cortex not only control and coordinate the human body, body but it also control all animal world on the earth and beyond the earth. So, mountains and valleys in this beautiful garden. It increases or these elevations and depressions increases total surface area more than three times and making up to 2200 to 2500 square centimeter. So, the <clears throat> total area of the cerebral cortex is 2200 to 2500 square centimeter and making or increasing up to three times. The original surface area without the convolutions or smooth surface area, it should be about 750 or 800, 800 square centimeter. So, it is multiplied by 3 to accommodate more neurons, to collect more information, to integrate more information, to interpret the information uh, more and to make good decisions or intelligent decisions. The surface area of cortex is increased by 3 times. Now, the cerebrum is having two hemispheres. We consider the forebrain or the cerebrum as a sphere. So, it is divided in two hemispheres. the right 
and the left. These two cerebral hemispheres anatomically, not functionally, are divided by a bilayer of the dura matter, the meningeal layer of dura matter known as Fox cerebri. So, it is having intervening layer of the meningeal layer of the dura matter. This layer is known as the Fox cerebri. The Fox cerebri. In lecture of the peritoneum, we have seen the peritoneum, the serous peritoneum, reduplicate to form the ligaments to form the omentum and to form the mesentery in same way. Here we are seeing the dura mater, the dura mater of brain, not the dura mater of the spinal cord is having two layers. The outer layer is the endosteel layer and inner is the meningeal layer. So the meningeal layer is forming a fold fox means fold cerebri. So this is the fold of the cerebrum known as fox cerebri. The floor of this part which is known as the median longitudinal fissure. This is known as the median longitudinal fissure or also known as interspherical fissure. So, this furrow, deep furrow is known as media, median longitudinal fissure or also known as interspherical fissure. So, this interspherical fissure is occupied by the fox cerebri and the floor of this interspherical fissure or the median longitudinal fissure is formed by a sheet like coma shaped or C shaped uh, part of the white matter. This is known as corpus callosum. So, this is the corpus callosum. The deeper layer of the cerebrum is having a core of white matter and it is also having the part of the primitive neural tube which are forming two lateral ventricles and one third ventricle which is also formed by parts of the diencephalon. So, below the corpus callosum we can see two lateral ventricles this is the septum pellucidum and this is the part of the fornix. In next lecture I will talk about the septum pellucidum what is for next, but it is having two lateral ventricles and also having some deep seated masses of gray matter known as the basal nuclei or the basal ganglia. So, what is the difference between ganglia and the nuclei? As I have told already, the ganglia is collection of cell bodies outside the CNS 
but when it is inside the CNS it is known as the nuclei, but when it is situated on the outermost surface of the brain it is known as cortex, either it may be cerebral cortex or the cerebellar cortex. So deep seated nuclei in this part of the brain, the cerebrum is known as basal nuclei. This part is having two big masses of grey matter. These beautiful big masses of grey matter are known as thalami or thalami. These masses of grey matter are known as thalami. And the space between two thalami is known as the third ventricle. So there are two lateral ventricles. Uh, these are first and second, and the third ventricle, which is situated between the cerebrum and the diencephalon, spatially between the hypothalamus and the thalamus. So this is the part of the diencephalon, this is not part of the cerebrum and this part develops from the diencephalon. In more deeper part, in more deeper part, We can see lens shaped, lens shaped masses of grey matter. These are known as lentiform nucleus or the lentiform nuclear complex. So this is the lentiform nucleus. Why this is known as lentiform nuclear complex? Because it is made up of two named nuclei. The outer is the putamen. So it is the putamen. And this is the globus pallidus. This is the globus pallidus which is also having two parts, the globus pallidus internus and the externus divided by the internal medullary lamina. The external medullary lamina is dividing the putamen and globus pallidus externus. One more mass of grey matter we can see here. It is also part of the cerebral or cerebrum and this is forming anatomically and functionally part of the basal ganglia known as the caudate nucleus. So this is the caudate nucleus. So this is the this is all about the cerebral hemisphere introduction or introductory class in next lecture i will talk about what is the sulcus and what is the gyrus and what are the association fibers the commissure fibers and projection fibers